Good to go, Brother Mike. Thank you, Chris. Well, tonight I'm going to be in the book of Matthew, 21st chapter. I'm going to start at verse 1. Very familiar passage to you. Matthew, excuse me, Matthew chapter 21, starting with verse 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king comes upon you, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. A very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And I just ask that you open our ears and open our hearts to receive this word tonight, Lord. And I just pray you give me the wisdom and the boldness to preach this message tonight. And I will preach the message the way you desire to be preached, Lord. I ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. This is known as the triumphal entry. Jesus coming into Jerusalem. I'm sure you've read this story many times, heard it many times, and being the time of season it is, the time of Passover and Resurrection Sunday being next Sunday, I felt it was good first to revisit. You find this in all four, all four of the Gospels, Pretty much the same story in all four Gospels, just slight differences. I believe in Luke, it doesn't actually say Hosanna, but it does say blessed. But all the people giving, giving praise to him, giving homage to him. In, uh, in Luke, they say, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And also in Luke, it adds that you know, the Pharisees were among the multitude. They're telling Jesus to rebuke his disciples. And he answers them, I tell you, if they hold their peace, the very stones would cry out. You know, God will be praised. Amen. If not by humans, he can make the stones cry out. That's There's right. nothing he can't do. You know, he, John the Baptist told the Pharisees, you know, don't, you know, basically don't brag to me that you're sons of Abraham. God can make sons of Abraham out of these very stones. But he wasn't, he wasn't impressed by that. But here they are, the multitude, you know, giving homage to Christ, laying their garments before him. When they, when they, when they laid their garments at his feet, they're, they're showing subjection. They were, this, is, this is what they did before a king. And this was the king of kings who was coming in to Jerusalem. And this is one of the few times that you see Jesus acting. He even told, told the, the people that he, was, that he was meek and humble of heart. You know, that's when he told them, when he told them, you'll come to me. I am meek and, and humble of heart. I'll give you rest because my yoke is easy. My burden is light. 
So he never, he never puffed himself up, never built himself up. He, he was never prideful, always humble. But to fulfill prophecy, he rides in on a donkey. It was fulfilled in fulfilled in Zechariah. You read in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Mm -hmm. Now kings normally would come in on a horse. Horse was a symbol of majesty, also a symbol of war. That wasn't Jesus' intent. His intent wasn't to come in and start war. He wasn't here as a he wasn't he didn't come as, as vengeful, not at that point anyway. The donkey was was a lowly animal. It was it was easy, bought, you know, took its time, easily approached. Now if he came in on a horse, the people would have to kind of stand back as the horse pranced around, but the donkey, they could get closer as they laid their garments at his feet. And as I said, this was around the time of Passover. Passover is on, was on the 14th of the month. So everybody's getting ready for that. And it's been accounted that when Jesus came into Jerusalem, it was the 10th of the month. And when you read back, in the Old Testament, for the preparation of Passover, the tenth of the month is when they would take the Paschal Lamb and present it, prepare it for, for Passover. So here was the Lamb of God, our Passover, right. presenting himself to the people before the Passover. Hallelujah. This was his public showing. It was it was a prelude to the past, to his passion, as it's sometimes referred to. The crucifixion is sometimes referred to as the passion of Christ. And I believe that's I believe that's what the I believe there was a movie called that a few years back, The Passion of Jesus Christ. Very horrific film. I think it just even that just barely touches on what what Jesus suffered for us. It's interesting to note that these shouting Hosanna and blessed be him who comes in the name of the Lord. Some of these very same people, a few days later, they're going to go from Hosanna to crucify him. Let him be crucified. What a, what a difference a few days makes. You read about that in Matthew, you know, just a few days later, he's brought before Pilate, you know, and they say, well, what, what will I do with this Jesus? And they say, let him be crucified, you know, well, what has he done? And they just kept shouting, let him be crucified. And as you read this in Matthew 27, as we know, Pilate took some water, washed his hands, said, I'm innocent of the blood of this, of this person. You see to it. And then they answered, his blood be on us. And on our children. Wow. They go from Hosanna to his blood be on us and our children. You, know, you, ever, you ever say something without really thinking about it first? You know, then later on, you're like, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe that wasn't the best thing to say. I think this is the situation here. They weren't really thinking about what they said. Because when you read about the, when you read the account in Luke, Luke 19, you know, as he's coming in, it says what you know, in verse 41, if you want to follow along with Luke 19, when he was come near, he beheld the city, and he wept over it. He wept over the city. It wasn't just simple tears. He was he was sobbing. He was lamenting. Said, if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid 
from your eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Because they didn't accept him. Because they so smugly said, let his blood be on us. They were chastised. You read about it in history. Around 70 AD, this, this came to pass. Jerusalem was besieged. They were, they were, they were surrounded. They actually dug a trench around the city. A lot of them starved. It's, it's been accounted that over a million Jews were, were murdered. Others put into slavery. A horrible time for the, for the Jewish people. All because they rejected their king and put him to death. How, how much different things could have been if the people had accepted him, if, if the religious leaders had accepted him? How much different things could have been? But all of this, as we know, had to happen to fulfill prophecy. It was our only chance. The perfect sacrifice had to come. Because if he hadn't come, if he hadn't laid down his life, We'd still be sacrificing animals. We would never make heaven. Amen. We'd be down. We'd be down in Hades, on the good side, because you read about it in the Old Testament there was there was hell and there was paradise. But still, when they were down in paradise, they couldn't see the light of heaven. They could. They still weren't. They still weren't seeing the full glory of God. They were still bound there by Satan. You know, and Satan desiring to have total control of them one day. But thank the Lord. Thank God he sent his son to die for us. And he went, he went down and he, he rescued those souls that were in paradise and brought them up to heaven. All that had to happen. And the whole time, Jesus kept his humbleness, his meekness. Even after he was resurrected. And as I said before, and Pastor Luna said before, on that road to Damascus, you know, he, when Paul had the encounter with him, Paul's knocked to the ground. Who are you? Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus of Nazareth. Kept that humility even after he was resurrected, glorified. Could have really, could have really laid into Paul, if you think about it. Paul had persecuted him all this time, killing Christians in the name of God, or so he thought. Jesus could have really laid into him. But he didn't, with that humble heart, told Paul what he wanted him to do. Made Paul a great apostle, a great, a great warrior for Christ. But what a difference a few days made. Here are the people that heard Jesus, seen Jesus, seen all the marvelous things that he did, seen miracle upon miracle after miracle. 
blind men seeing, deaf men hearing, lame people walking, people with leprosy, with new skin, even dead people raised up. All the time hated by the religious leaders. But the people followed him. And that's what the Pharisees couldn't stand. But when you read about it in John, it says, you know, the world has gone after him. They were following him. They were listening to him. They weren't, weren't listening to, they're not listening to us anymore. They're following him. They're listening to him. He's raining on our parade. He's ruining everything. So they had to turn the people against him. Y'all know how fickle these Jews were. How easily swayed they were. Like, yeah, crucify him. He blasphemed. Blasphemy? Yeah, crucify him. We'll take Barabbas. We don't want Jesus. We want, we want Barabbas. We don't, we don't care what Barabbas has done. We'll take him. Release him to us. And as I read these, as I read these texts and studied it, don't you know? I've probably done the same in my life. You know, we can we can praise the Lord one minute, or we're just you know, we're giving Him all the glory, and things go wrong. And where were you? Where were you, Jesus? You're supposed to be the God who heals. You're supposed to be the, you're supposed to deliver. Where were you when my mom died? Where, where were you when my sister was strung out on drugs? Where, where were you? You know what? I don't need you anymore. As I said, what a difference a day can make. Today can be all sunshine and roses. Everything's right with the world. I love you, Lord. I lift my voice to worship you. And the next day, the sun's not shining so bright. Things aren't going so well. dog got run over. The boss yelled at you. Whatever the case may be. We just don't understand. out. They were crying out to God. They were crying out. There, Hosanna. They were giving praise, just as Jesus said they would. While the people were jeering and mocking, the stones were crying out. It's 
which is so easy sometimes, isn't it, to go from Hosanna to crucify him? But see, it's because the Jews, the Jews did it. They didn't take the time to really know him. If they had studied the word, truly studied the word, they, they would know who it was who came into Jerusalem that day. The Pharisees should have known who it was. I think, I think they did know. They knew exactly who it was who came in that day. They knew exactly who it was the people were following. But as I said, they were so they were so puffed up with pride and self righteousness and what they had going on. They weren't gonna let anybody come in and steal their thunder, not even the Son of God. So if that meant he had to die, so be it. But those of us here tonight who've been born again, who study the Word, who, who know the Lord, who have a relationship with Him, who walk with Him, we know that every day is not going to be sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. But we learn to praise him on the sunny days. We learn to praise him in the storms. Because it's in those storms, that's when we need him the most, isn't it? But then those storms that we cry out to him, that we lean on him, that we reach out to him, when we're plunged in the depths of despair, that's when we reach out to him. That's when he pulls us up. Jesus. Those dark days aren't so dark. Yes, there's suffering. Yes, there's pain in our lives. But when we lean on Jesus, we can still say, Hosanna. Yeah. Blessed are you, Lord. Yes. Glory to you, Lord. Amen. We love, love you, Lord. Even though I'm going through this rough time, even though I'm going through this storm, I'm going through this addiction, I'm going, whatever it is I'm going through, I'm going to trust in you. Amen. Chris, is that you've had to put your trust in him for, what, 30 years? Plus. 30 years plus. He's been near a cripple because of neck and back pain, the broken neck, back problems. This morning he could barely, barely bend over to pick up his bottle of water. I'm sure there's more as he, he would just rather stay in bed, just rather stay home because it hurts too much to get in the car to come here. But he comes. Why? Because he loves the Lord. Yeah. Even though he's in pain, even though he's suffering, yeah. he knows that he is still Lord. Right. He still gets up here and he says, Hosanna! Glory to you, Lord! Yeah. You deserve all the praise. You deserve all my honor and praise, Lord. And if Chris, if Chris can do it, I can do it. You can do it. Yes. Amen. We can all come here in the morning and in the evening. By the way, Chris, I just thank you. Because you're, you're an inspiration. You know, because when I think I'm having a bad day, I think about what you're going through. It's like, you know, he's here. He's not complaining. He's worshiping. I can do it too. So let's not be like the Pharisees and let's not be like the Jewish people back then. Let's not be fickle in our faith. There's too many, there's too many people out there like that. 
We, we don't need fickle Christians. We don't need part-time Christians. You know, as they, you know, they, it says they laid down their garments. When we, when we accept Christ as our Savior, as our Lord and Savior, we lay everything in front of him. We give him, we give him our all. Yes. Pastor referenced it this morning. I've, I've referenced it before in, in John. I think it was chapter 6. He says, eat my flesh. Drink my blood. Take all of me. And I'll raise you up on the last day. When we follow him wholly, when we don't, you know, we don't, don't just take, don't just take the miracle of Jesus. Right. Don't, don't try to make him into some prosperity, everything's all right, Jesus. Right. That's for other churches to do. We don't, we don't preach another Jesus. We preach the Jesus that exists right here from Genesis. This whole book points to Jesus, talks about Jesus. So read the word. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. When you, when you finish reading it cover to cover, just start over. That's what I do. Because he, he reveals something to me new every every time. It's like, wow, I didn't, I didn't see that the first ten times I read that. How did I miss that? It just wasn't time. But he reveals it to me, and I thank him when he does reveal something new to me. I'm like, thank you, Lord. Hosanna. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because of him, I can do all things. That's right. Because he strengthens me. So if we rely on, we lean on him and do things in his strength, we'll make it through the day, no matter what the day throws at us. No matter what situation, we will say, Hosanna. Yeah. Amen? Amen. All right, let's stand.